Hello everyone, welcome to another edition of Stephen Inks. Today, we're gonna to be looking at a pen from one of my favorite uh, fountain pen companies in the entire world, uh, and many of yours as well, the Pen BBS 308. The reason that I bought this pen is because I've enjoyed my Pen BBS 456 so much that I wondered if I could get a similar drawing experience out of one of their more cost-effective pens, uh, and the one that I kept getting recommendations for over and over and over again was the 308. So I got one, uh, I'm excited about it, let's take a look and let's play. All right, just in today in the mail, we're looking at the Pen BBS 308. This is my second pen from Pen BBS. I'm excited about it. It was recommended to me. Um, I do love my Pen BBS 456. It is a little bit on the expensive side, and this is a little more budget friendly at less than $20. So I'm excited to see if the quality remains. Um, came in this cardboard sleeve, and as I pull it out of the sleeve, I'm seeing the exact same Pen BBS box that my 456 came in. So, so far it feels similar. Open it up. Inside, here's the pen. And I'm gonna pull that out. Uh, what this comes with, as far as the box is concerned, is um, there's this little foam thing. I usually throw these away. And then this cardboard area right here has a little um, Velcro strap. So if you want to store the pen in the box, these are nice boxes. They, uh, they feel like they're built kind of to last. Um, and so you could place them, you could place the pen in there and uh, keep your pen in a box if you're a box kind of person. I'm more of a cup by the side of my dresser kind of person, but sometimes I like a box. All right, little plastic sleeve, nothing special here. When we pull it out, Here's that pen. All right, here's that 308. And uh, my first thought when I'm looking at it is I like the finish way more than I thought I would. I don't know how well this comes across in the um, video, but the um, this one is called Smog or something like that. Yeah, Smog is the name, which doesn't sound super pretty or attractive, but there's such a cool 3D element to the body. It's really nice. I like the shape. It's not an exact cigar shape. It's got a little bit of a pointier end over here, a little bit wider in the front here. So it's got a nice little, it's got its own little quirks and it's got a metal band around the side, uh, threaded, of course, like the uh, 456. The section feels, again, similar to the 456, definitely lighter. That can account for the fact that the uh, body of the 456 holds that, um, uh, the uh, vacuum filler. So this is a little lighter because it's a cartridge converter. Posts. Um, I like it posted. I think I might actually uh, use it this way because the weight seems a little nicer to me that way. I, I like a little bit heavier pens. This is pretty light without it. Um, looks like we've got Pen BBS F Fine Nib. And um, this is, again, it looks like it's the exact same cut of the nib. Got a little bit of an upturn on the end. I'm told this is a Waverly grind. Um, it's got these little scalloped edges. So it's got a nice little size to it, a nice little shape. Uh, I really like the Pen BBS nib, so I'm hoping this actually does perform the same as my 456. Um, the 456 has a gold and silver, like this center part is gold, so this is a 100% silver colored nib, so that's something. Um, twisting off the threads, okay, the threads go a little bit harder than I thought they would, which makes me think that maybe this has some kind of, ah uh, yes, it does. There's a little uh, rubber O-ring in there. So if you're the type of person who likes to, um, who likes to eyedropper their pens, I suppose you could probably do this with just a little bit of silicone grease and it would seal right away. I, I find eyedropper pens to be frustrating and annoying, so I would never do that. But if you are interested, 
you definitely could. And I do think it's nice that these threads seal very nicely because of that rubber gasket, it makes them feel very, uh, very secure. So I like that even though I would not use the, um, the function of an eyedropper pen. Um, the nibs and section do kind of look, I'm gonna look at this later after I look at the uh, converter, but it looks like they might not come apart, which is kind of weird. Um, so here is the converter. It's a nice little converter, uh, nothing special, but um, yeah, looks like it functions perfectly fine. There's that, and um, the inside of the pen. Again, it, it doesn't look like this moves or can be removed, and I definitely um, ruined the back end of my feed on my 456 trying to get it out before I learned that that was a um, threaded removal, but this doesn't appear to be threaded at all. So I don't know, this might be as far apart as the section comes without possibly damaging the pen, so I'm not gonna do that, and we're just gonna leave it like that. All right. So uh, there's the pen. We're going to put it back together. We're gonna ink it up and see how it flies. All right, so I've been feeling black inks lately, so Noodler's Bulletproof Black is what is going into this pen. And um, this is, I've been using this ink for quite some time, so you can see about a third of it is gone. This is, uh, I think I've had this for maybe four years or more, so that's pretty good. I do like this long style converter so I can get it into that ink bottle without getting my fingers all inky. Maybe you don't care about that, but you know, I've got a, a clean house to keep whenever it's possible. So, I'm gonna do a double fill here, just once I get those threads in and get them inked up. The second time is usually the charm with uh, filling it up, and there we go. Okay, this section seems to hold back a lot of the ink. There's the pen, I'm going to blot it off real quick with a rag, um, and there we go. Looks good. Can't wait to draw with it. Okay, a little bit of a return to form for now. This is actually the same kind of notebook that I um, originally started this channel with. It's a cheap um, Artist Loft brand notebook from Michaels. So um, yeah, just, uh, just cheap paper, relatively thick. Um, and it, it works pretty well. You've seen it in some of my older videos. So uh, looking at this, we're going to try some, oh, there we go. Starts working right away, which is a good sign. I'm gonna put some shapes down. And right away, what I'm seeing is what I've loved about Pen BBS pens is there's a tight controlled line and you can actually make this line a little bit more um, wet if you like by pressing down on it for short intervals of time um, and like three to five seconds and then doing that over and over again until you get the flow that you like. I like this drier kind of thinner line flow where I could go fast like if you see if I do a fast line it's got a little bit of a point to it. If I do a slower line, I can get a little bit of a thicker line. So it is very responsive to my hand, which is what I'd hoped for, because that's what I've been getting from my 456. Um, this feels good. This feels like, I feel like I, I mean, we'll see until when I'm done with actually drawing with it, but I feel like I can recommend this um, as much as I can recommend the 456, which is a lot. That has been a, a staple of my everyday drawing kit, the 456 lately. Um, 
So this looks like it will be fantastic as well. And this is inexpensive enough that I think it could qualify as a work pen. I've mentioned this before, like there's pens that you take to work because if something bad happens to it, you're not out that much money. Uh, and then there's pens that stay in your house all the time because they were so expensive that if you were to lose them, you know you would never replace them. And uh, that is a tragedy. But this 308, I would not want to lose. Because like I said, I'm really enjoying it. It's fun to use. But if I did, I would definitely be able to, and I definitely would, buy it again. So yeah, even with larger size subjects, like I'm drawing a little bit larger than I normally do, I still get a very nice little amount here. Um, and I can make a fun little drawing of some shapes and even if I were to do some swirly, swirly, squiggly lines, the pen keeps up. It's dry, but it's not impossibly dry. And I think, again, I think a really great pen for art is one that strikes that balance. So it doesn't go dry and feel like you're scraping it against the paper, but it's not so wet that you can't control the quality of the line. And this uh, Pen BBS nib goes very far into uh, that territory. It's um, it's right where I, I would like it to be. So this is a um, a style of nib that I think works really well for art applications. Um, I can do a couple of lines just to show you. I can do them really dark if I push down, which isn't, you know, it's like medium pressure, not heavy pressure and then very light pressure and then just barely touching it to the paper I can get that that's like three different thicknesses of line so cool I can't wait to play around with this uh, in a larger piece um, but before I go a little bit of art advice something um, that I have been thinking about lately and just trying to improve in my art is focus on one goal at a time. This is kind of life advice too. But um, for example, if I want to learn how to draw a great quality line, I might practice just drawing lines over and over again. And I do that actually. I do have a couple of pages where I just draw lines and then try to draw a line in between the lines without touching the other lines and just try to draw straight lines. Spending time focused on that one skill is gonna make that skill so much easier when you have to combine it with other skills. So uh, rather than trying to do a completed art piece, if you're stuck on one thing that you can't do very well, like straight lines or curved lines, you can practice curving your lines, practice drawing from the shoulder instead of your arm. Um, spend some time on focus practice. If you have issues with shading, just do uh, a lot of what I do here, drawing shapes and shading them. That can be a lot of fun and you can also quickly improve because you can finish stuff more quickly and then search for feedback or give yourself some feedback and try again. And it's not gonna take you that long as compared to doing a full complete piece and trying to figure out what's wrong with it after you're done. Anyway, uh, that's something that I'm doing one goal at a time. And uh, speaking of my goals, I got a goal to uh, draw something with this pen. So let's get to it.
With this drawing, you're getting a little peek into my personal life. Um, as you've guessed with how many videos I upload per month, like two, sometimes three, this is not my full-time job being a pen YouTuber. Um, my career is, uh, I'm a science teacher, and this is one of the projects that I'm having my students do. We are making a poster that describes the process of photosynthesis. And I've had this philosophy since the beginning of my teaching career that served me pretty well, which is that I try to, whenever possible, do my assignments with my students. So that way I get reminded, oh, what part of this is gonna be difficult? What um, do the students need to know? What kind of information do they need to put into this project in order to get a good grade? What does a good grade look like? Um, I was told in the beginning of my career that if you have some skill in art and you uh, want students to draw, you shouldn't um, draw to the best of your abilities. You should keep it very simple. But I found the opposite to be true. My philosophy, when you do something um, in a big and grandiose way, students understand that you have high expectations for them. And I always have high expectations for my students, and I'm very often not disappointed. Um, and I don't think I get the same result if I hold back. So this is my photosynthesis poster. I hope you like it. I kind of feel like a photosynthesis poster would be a really cool idea for a, a t-shirt or a, um, a book bag or something if I ever had a merch store like that where I could do those sorts of things. I'd love to design a t-shirt someday. Anyway, the 308 handles amazingly and um, it's just as good as the 456 as far as the writing experience. So it depends on what you like and also what you can afford. Uh, it's a fantastic pen and I love it very much. So um, yeah, I highly recommend it. And um, yeah, the 456 I also recommend because uh, it's a great pen, but it is uh, about twice as expensive. So um, I guess it just depends on what your budget is and what filling mechanism you prefer. Um, personally, I like cartridge converter pens, so I like this pen very much. All right, that's it. Hope you enjoyed. Final thoughts, I have zero regrets about buying from PenBBS yet again, and um, this pen is fantastic. Uh, it honestly performs just as well as the 456 at about half the price, and it still comes in this really cool turned acrylic finish. Um, it's super fun, it's fun to play with, it's within a budget that um, it won't break the bank. Uh, you will wait a while for shipping, uh, from Shanghai, but I think if you're willing to be patient, it is definitely worth it. It definitely pays off. I highly recommend this company and the pens that they make. So that does it for this episode of Stephen Inks. Thank you all for watching. Thank you for joining me as we create together. Um, please don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Leave a like below, leave a comment below, um, share your love for your favorite pen in the comments section. See you there. Have a great day, everybody.